Canadian woman. You were, you're American. I'm actually dual. Yeah. Are you dual? Yeah. yeah. All right, are we running now? So here we are. Anna Olson, another great visit from you. We love having you here, and I even more so this time because you're back to baking. And I think the title's so appropriate because you have done chef books. You started out pastry chef. Mm -hmm. You've done cooking books. You've done your television series with cooking too. But and we always find when we ask people whether they like to cook or bake, they will choose one over the other. And I bake her, and I'm so thrilled you've gone back to baking. Now tell me, is that what you felt too? It's. I feel like I've come home. Is that right? Yes. I I love cooking, and I'll never stop enjoying cooking, but if I'm feeling a little lost or not together, baking is still what soothes me, calms me, right. it's what I can obsess over and I don't stop. So, so if somebody's going to be a baker, because certainly with uh, with cooking, um, you know, there are skill sets you need, like you need knife skills, mm -hmm. you know, how to saute, there are certain things. What are things that budding young bakers would like, should need to know the skill sets they need and, and that sort of thing? When it comes to success in a baker's kitchen, the first thing you need is patience. <laughs> There's an instant gratification when it comes to cooking. With right. baking, it takes patience. Right. Making the dough, letting the dough rest. Making the mousse, letting the mousse set. Right. Making the cake, letting the cake bake. And then rest, and then iced. And so it takes that time commitment, but it takes that patience. But honestly, there's what I love about baking is that alchemy. Yeah, the chemistry. Yeah, the you've whole, got the science yeah. side of it, where you can control how ingredients work together. You can control the measurement. Right. You can control everything. But then all of a sudden, you have to relinquish control. And that's hard for us to do these yeah. days. We like to control everything. <laughs> but that's what's gratifying about baking, is there has to be that trust. And you put it in yeah. the oven, and then it takes over. So would you recommend, though, to... I mean, people love to try new things. Bakers just can't help themselves. I mean, they have the tried and true, but they're always likely to experiment. Um, is it good to do that for guests? Is it good to do that at the holiday season? Actually, no. Giving your new dessert recipe on audition, mm -hmm. a screen test, is a good idea. Yeah. Because I do, even when I'm doing a recipe, if I'm developing a recipe, I can make it taste good on the first try, I feel good, but it really looks great on mm -hmm. the first try. So that's where that finesse comes in, because okay. now you're predicting your ending. It's okay. like a favorite movie, you, you know how it ends, but you just love getting there. Getting there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you said patience before. For mm -hmm. What else should somebody in, be aware of when they want to You should baking? be organized. Now, of course, a cook will tell you that too. Mise en place, <laughs> that <laughs> term of having right. everything in its place before you start, is just as important in baking as it is in cooking mm -hmm. because you'll make a five minute task into a 20 minute task right. if you're not organized at first. Right. Um, but you do, believe it or not, like cooking, going with your gut. That really says helps. a lot, yeah. Yep. Because you gotta. You, sometimes you you go with it, and that's how. Yeah, some of the best things happen. What about measurements too? Do you weigh? Mm -hmm. Do you do you do um, um, or do you use? Cu I know you use cups in here, but mm -hmm. in a professional kitchen, it's weight. I will. I'll confess that if I can convert yeah. North America to weights, I would love to get us Wouldn't on board you? with that because the precision. It's so much easier. It's actually mm -hmm. less dishes because you put your bowl on the scale. Boom. And you just build within right. the bowl and weigh and tear right. each time. It's far, far less room for error um, because uh, a weigh does this, as we sadly all know. Yeah. <laughs> the scale does well, not and lie. A and a cup is, not, is a cup is a cup. I mean, it can be I a know. cup in the UK, a cup in North America, a cup in. It's different. States, we have yeah. metric by volume, which yeah. helps us out. But that's why I had to write a whole little essay in here about testing your measuring cups because we presume. Yeah, and it's that not. a cup is a cup, yeah. but if it's not from a reliable source, no. it's not all. It's same no. with the measuring spoons. I remember you told me that I think yeah. years ago. Yeah. You said, no, 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 so those spoons are no good. You've got to get these ones. They look pretty. Yeah. Who knew, right? yeah. So okay. another thing you do in this book that I think from when you first did your baking book, I won't say how many years ago. Uh, no. no. You've got dietary restrictions. You include mm -hmm. that in here too. Oh, and well, that's changed dramatically in the years since you were. Over the past five to six years, particularly, I have been asked so often about. Uh, well, people are looking to, the questions have been around converting recipes to gluten-free, mm -hmm. dairy-free, egg-free. And in order to wrap my head around the allergies, I first I updated my nutritional education. Yes. I went back to school huge, for a little bit uh, just to get my head around it. And then I had to start playing with these ingredients. So for me, it's less about finding a substitution, but finding that recipe and that combination of ingredients that delivers what you expect out of something. Right. A, a chocolate cake should taste like a sweet but fluffy but rich and moist chocolate cake, right. regardless if it has no dairy and eggs in it, yeah. and how do you get there? 
Was um, that a lot of trial and error for you? That took more trial and error yeah. than my normal, because the normal ratios you learn in cooking, I can look at a recipe yeah. and look at that amount of butter, sugar, flour, and eggs, and, and know exactly what yeah. that texture is going to be like and the right. taste is. All of a sudden, you know, it's I'm not. supposed to know what potato flour does in yes. cooking? No, so I had to learn a curve. Yeah, I made a lot of bricks. Made a lot of bricks. <laughs> Banana bread. <laughs> but, you know. Did I, you find it, though, like, I, Worthwhile. I mean, you obviously yes. you've included it, and you well, you learn. I learned you learn more from the learning curve would be huge. Yeah, you learn from your mistakes yes. more than you do. I'd hate to do something great on the first try and then try and figure out well, how did that why? work? Yeah. No, you learn more from the right. mistakes. So it was a great learning curve, and ideally, I have made some recommendations without going and buying wacky ingredients or things that are hard to find. Yes. But to use those ingredients we have on hand. Well, this is a beautiful book, and I think this will become a classic standard for, for years to come. I mean, I, I just, it's gorgeous. And I know you have a Sharpie to sign this in exactly the matching color. It's I only know. You. Look, you match. Yeah, I know. Thank you.